Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about my top five go-to page types that I use when I design or build any SharePoint intranet site. And once you know what these page types are and how to use them, you're going to be able to design any intranet site with ease and really nail down the user experience so that people can understand the content in your site and it's laid out in a logical manner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each page type individually just to give you an idea of what it is. Then we're going to look at how you actually use them in a hierarchical manner to create a structure for your sites. And then we're going to look at how we've planned out a site using these page types and what it actually looks like within SharePoint. So you'll have a very good example of a SharePoint internet site and how we came about with the page architecture and user experience design. So plenty to cover, but we're going to do it nice and quick. So let's get into it. Okay, so my first page type is going to be the obvious one, okay? It's what I call a landing page. So it represents the home page on your site. So you'll typically have one of these, okay? But it's super important because we want to show our promoted content and all the feeds. We want to give people a very good idea of what our site has to offer to them. Second page type is what I like to call a destination type page. And this is a page that will ultimately hold the information someone is looking for within your site. You're not expecting people to go to this page and have to navigate further down into your site straight Structure. It's the page that holds the information. Now, I like to keep these pages typically structured the same for consistency, where I have the main body of content down the center. And then on the right hand side, I'll have supporting information, such as any metadata about the page or navigation to similar pages. The third type of page kind of sits between our landing page type and our destination page, and it's called a navigation page. And I use pages like this to help people understand the broad topic. So, for example, in a HR site where we have an employee handbook the employee handbook is a broad topic okay it contains lots of different policies typically and um, the policies would be destination pages and the navigation page will be like the index of an employee handbook that helps people understand what's in it and then they can progressively get to the point they want to get to so the user experience is nicely paced then the fourth page type is what i call a feature page so this is where you have an initiative or something big you want to shout about on your site so this page breaks the rules of a destination page in that these can be whatever we want we want to make these as engaging as we can as much content as we can that obviously makes sense but really draw people in and get them excited about whatever it is the page represents there's no rules on this page in terms of layout the only rule being make it as engaging and dare i say it sexy as you can and the fifth page type is what i call a list or library page and it's a page really where we can go beyond the out of the box experience of a document library or a list and what we'll do is we'll create custom views and embed them on list library pages so that we can frame the content in our list or document library so what's the context that sits around the documents that we have embedded on this page or indeed the list so for example an faq you can create it as just a list, but when we put it on a list library page, we give the opportunity to tell people where these question and answers came from, how they can submit more questions, all good stuff like that. And so having these five different page types, they cover a massive amount of requirements and they're really useful to have in your toolbox for designing and planning your SharePoint internet sites. It doesn't stifle creativity. There's lots of variation within these, but as structural elements for planning your site, they are golden and I use them all the time. This course is sponsored by, well, me, Academy365, and specifically our SharePoint Internet Site Builder Masterclass course. Now, believe it or not, I build internets. I build a lot of them. Um, and over the years, I've found that while organizations are different, the core internet requirements are typically very, very similar. And that's what this course is. It's a course where I've taken the years of experience and I've distilled it down into a single course that's gonna show you how to build a department internet site jam-packed with these common requirements. Now, this course focuses heavily on the user experience of an internet site. I find that is the most important thing um, above all else when it comes to the adoption and uh, customer satisfaction within your internet. We cover requirements from communication, so news and events, and how to create various types of each and display them in multiple feeds on your homepage. I cover how you can take large bodies of information and construct them into site pages and metadata so you don't have to rely on documents. The course covers how to build tailored user experiences for your audience, such as new joiners. We cover branding and lots, lots more. You don't have to be technical for this course. It's aimed at any user who finds themselves in charge of a site or wants to create a new site. We take things step by step so it's easy to follow along. You can find a link to the course in the description below along with a nice tasty discount. So if you're interested, please check it out. Okay, back to the video.
Now we're familiar with our five different page types, how do we use these page types in a hierarchical manner to design that experience and the flow through our site? So I typically like to think of these levels in terms of level one, two, and three, okay? So level one is usually the starting point where I consider people are gonna start off within the site, and it's really the landing page level. Like I said, it's a shop front, it's the front door into our site. And that leaves me with level two and level three, okay? Now level two is typically where we're gonna introduce the topic um, so we can provide further navigation to our destination pages, which is typically a level three. Now this is rule of thumb, okay? It's not something you have to stick to religiously. Don't tie yourself up and not try to follow it, but it's a good way to try and steer yourself. Because I find once we get beyond level three, we're into rabbit hole territory here. And this is similar to if you work with file shares and you have deeply nested folder structures, you start to go down into a structure and you kind of lose where you are and you lose your context. Now again, having three levels is a guideline here, okay? There are many cases where you will be on level one and you go straight to level three because it's standalone, okay? It doesn't need a navigation kind of topic page for it. That's absolutely fine. So now let's get practical. Let's put it into context, okay? So I've used this model to design the site in my Internet Site Builder Masterclass. So I'm gonna walk you through how I've used these page types to design that site. So first, let's think of the requirements of the site, okay? The site is a HR department internet site. The requirements are fairly common among most internet department sites that I've seen in that we want a homepage, rich and engaging, which provides links to our promoted content and our various feeds. That's a given, that's perfect. We also want the meet the team page where we can introduce the members of our team and what we do. We wanna build an employee handbook that represents one of these big topics that we want to communicate to people. We want to build a customized user experience for a specific user group, which would be our new joiners in that we want to have a destination page for them which covers them as a topic. HR being a service department, we typically get a lot of questions, so let's get ahead of that. Let's build an FAQ on our site. We also want to communicate a training catalog or resource catalog of training that's available for our employees. And then we also have an initiative within our company, which is our social club, and we want to build a rich and engaging user experience for introducing people to the club and what it offers. So they're the core requirements. So let's see how we use our page model to structure that out inside the site. So the structure that site would look something as follows. So we have our home page here, okay, the front door to our site. And then we see that we have a meet the team page. So this is where we're being flexible in our rules that we don't have to go level one, two, and three. We've gone from level one, which is our home page, straight down to level three, and it's a destination page of meet the team. Then we have our employee handbook navigation page. And this again is the topic of employee handbook. And here is where we would communicate the various sections within it. Then we come to our new joiner section where we want to have that targeted experience for those user types, okay? So we want a navigation page where we can present to them all the information and destination pages that we think are applicable to them, such as our inductions destination page. We've got a list library page for our FAQ and that we have an FAQ on the site and we structure it with metadata so we can tag specific questions and answers as being relevant to new joiners and we'll display them on this page. We have a destination page, which is a links page for them to access handy links and things they'll find useful, as well as pointing to other destination pages that sit elsewhere on the site logically, such as well-being and benefits, which are actually part of a handbook, but we think they're relevant for new joiners, so we'd link them from our new joiners destination page. Then we have our FAQ page, which again is a list library page, which contains our full FAQ list that we have on the site. We have a training catalog where we're gonna show another list embedded on a page, which shows employees all the training that we offer to them and various bits of information about it, all stored as metadata in the list. And then finally, we have a feature page. So this is where our initiative is our social club within our company. And we want to make this really engaging to show people all the fun stuff that we do and how they can join. So this is gonna be a great page for that feature page type. So now, as you can see, using our defined page types and the hierarchy level we discussed below, it's very easy to even run a workshop about how we're gonna design our department site or even a full intranet. And we can very easily follow what the user experience will be and what type of pages we're gonna expect to have to create on our site. And as I said, typically for me, this is a very useful way that I've found to help plan the structure of these sites and the user experience. 
So now we have the plan on paper, let's have a look at the actual site that we built from this plan and see what it looks like and follow the user experience through it. So looking at the site, we can see our homepage, which is here, which is where we're showing all our various feeds and we're showing the highlighted or promoted content on our site. So we mentioned our employee handbook, if we click that. This is an example of the live navigation page where people can come in here and they can see what the various destination pages would be that sit behind this. So attendance, benefits, et cetera, et cetera. So if I went into benefits, for example, I'm now on the benefits destination page. So this is the end of that journey to find out about benefits. I came from home to employee handbook and now I'm on benefits. And now I'm within here, I can see all the information about my sick pay, any documentation related to it. I can embed it on the page in context. And then we also have the supporting information about the page on the right hand side, such as who's the contact, the next review date. And we can also use metadata within the site to build navigation between the sections. So so here I could come to attendance. And again, we have a very consistent look and feel so people can get familiar with the information that we have on this page and throughout our site. Having our plan also helps us plan our navigation for our site, okay? So if we come back in here, we see all the various categories of information on our site. So if we want to go to our meet the team page, we can come in here. And again, it's a destination page, but with a slightly different layout and structure, but we can see all the members of our team and then the supporting information, what's our mission and what's the values of our department. So again, that's our meet the team page here. We wanna check out our new joiner experience. Again, we'll come to new joiners and we can have all our sub areas in here within the menu. But we come here, again, we're using a consistent layout and look and feel so we can help people understand our site. So we can see here all about inductions and our FAQs and all the good stuff we mentioned, all the destination pages, which our navigation page helps people get to and explore the site at a nice handy pace. And then if we wanna look at a list or library page, we can come into our training and development, which is a site page, okay, but it has an embedded list on it, which is all the information about our training and development options that we're offering people. All that good stuff is baked in here. And again, we have our supporting information on the right-hand side. Now, if you just went straight into the list, it wouldn't be possible to give this level of user experience because we just don't have the options in the list. And then if we wanna look at our feature page, which is our social page, we come in here, and this is the page where we want to add a little bit of wow factor to provide lots of information. It's nearly a dashboard for this project or initiative. So in here, we welcome people to the site. We have a nice banner area, a link to sign up and get involved. We're gonna show the upcoming events and dates relevant to this topic, which is our social event. So, you know, Thirsty Thursdays or Fit Fridays, all the reasons you should sign up who's on the committee, and we can have a photo gallery in here all about the good things that we've done and the fun that we've had, which gives people a great idea of what the social club is all about. So that's a snapshot into the site and how we can use the plan and our five pages to construct a great user experience that people can use, navigate, and really feel comfortable with. So I hope you found that useful. It's an insight into how I think and how I design these sites. I hope you can do the same. If you're interested in the site that I demonstrated in here and you want to know how to build it step-by-step, step, this is the site we build in our SharePoint Site Builder Masterclass. Obviously, we're just showing the end user experience in the pages, but the course goes through how to actually build every element from the supporting list, libraries, and metadata, and all that good stuff. You can go from zero to a fully baked site rather quickly. If you found the video useful, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions for me or you have anything you'd like to add into the model, please drop a comment below. Until next time, see ya.